Hello everyone, this is Dr. Dhiman and I welcome you all to this microprocessor tutorial series. So in this video, we will learn about the memory write operation that is the memory write machine cycle timing diagram for the 8085 microprocessor. Okay, so we will learn about the different signals that are used for the timing diagram. So what do we understand by timing diagram? Timing diagram represents or timing diagram is the graphical representation of the various signals in the microprocessor that are used for the various operations. So we are considering various operations. We have learned about the output fetch operation. We have learned about the memory read machine cycle. And in this video, we will learn about the memory write. This one, the third one, we have already covered these two parts this two part is complete this part is also complete in this video we will learn about the memory write that is the mw and in our coming videos we will cover these points okay so if you are not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon for future video upload notification so let us start with in this video we will learn about the memory write operation now let us understand the various signals so first of all we have to understand the status signals so in the case of memory write operations the status signals s1 and s0 these values are respectively 0 and 1. These are the previously defined signals that will be used for different operations that will be used for the selection for the various operations or this status signal will be representing what is the operation the microprocessor is performing and we have the read bar signal here read bar signal value is 1 why this read bar signal is 1 here because this is not a read operation we are concerned with the write operation here therefore the write bar signal as it is the active low signal so this value will be 0 here here you can see and it is a memory related operation because it is the memory write operation therefore this input output slash m bar m bar is the active low signal therefore to enable the memory unit we have to put a active low signal or zero value here here we are not concerned with the INTA bar signal therefore it, it is uh, always one except the INTA operation so we have learned about the various signals and now we will use these signals for drawing the timing diagram so first of all let us understand how the microprocessor works for the memory write operation suppose we have the microprocessor here suppose this is the microprocessor unit and we have a stack of memory unit so here we will be having different addresses suppose we have the addresses 2000 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. So these are the various memory addresses. Here we have six memory addresses. Suppose we want to move the content of the accumulator to the memory address. Suppose 2001. Suppose we want to transfer the data that is available in the microprocessor unit we want to transfer to this memory address or we want to write this data into this memory address so in the case of memory write operation data is transferred from the microprocessor unit to the memory element or the memory unit so the data will be transferred from the microprocessor to the memory unit so here we have considered 2001 is the address suppose we have a instruction suppose move m comma a so this is the memory write instruction that is we are writing the content of the accumulator into this memory address suppose this m here is equal to 2001 okay this is the memory address we have in the m unit okay that is the memory unit and we want to suppose transfer data suppose we have a data that is 28 this is the data we want to transfer this data into this memory address so what will happen 28 data 20 in hex code this data is available in this microprocessor we want to transfer or we want to write this data into this memory address so what we have to do now we have to use the graphical representation of the timing diagram so what is the main or the most important part is the timing diagram so we have to always keep in mind that the timing is the main part in any case of timing diagram when we have to make a signal high or low that is the most important part and this all the operations in this timing diagram on the left hand side we have we have to coordinate with this 
clock signal this clock signal will be representing various transitions and these transitions are called as the t stage here we have t stage t1 t2 and t3 we have three columns and these three columns represents different t stage t stage means it is the transition state so for writing a data into the memory unit suppose the accumulator data is 20h accumulator is equal to 20h this is the data and we have this one is the instruction and the memory address is suppose 2001H. So what is the higher order memory address here? Here higher order memory address is the 20 and the lower order memory address is the 01. In the first machine cycle we have to transfer this memory address or we have to indicate the memory unit that we want to write the data available in the accumulator into this memory address that is the memory address is 2001H. So this program counter will give this information or the memory address to the memory unit here we have the this is the address bus okay here we can see that this is the star mark here already we are already given that this is the demultiplex address bus this higher order bits will always represent or always carry the higher order memory address so what is the higher order memory address here this is the msb okay that is the most significant bit and zero one here this is the l s b okay so what we can see 20 h is the higher order memory address so this 20 h or 20 will be transferred through this address bus here 20 h will come through this address bus and during the first cycle when the ALA signal will be high here in this diagram ALA signal is not shown let me show you here so if we want to add another signal that is the ALA signal let me draw an extension part of this diagram so what will happen here so the early signal will be high for the first clock cycle this signal will be high for the first clock cycle and for the remaining clock cycle this ALE signal will be low so when this early signal is high the address data multiplex bus this is the ad7 to ad0 ad represents address data this is the time shared address data multiplex bus okay that means this bus ad7 to ad0 this will work sometimes as an address bus and sometimes it will work as a data bus so during the first cycle when the ALE signal is high ALE full form is the address latch enable that means it will latch the data bus as the address bus and it will store the lower order address during the first clock cycle because during the first clock cycle this ALA signal is high so let me draw it properly this ALA signal will be high for the first clock cycle so this ALA signal will represent or it will indicate the multiplex address data bus that it has to now transfer the address or it has to read or write the address into the memory unit or from the memory unit it has to accept or it has to find out the address so whatever be the content of the accumulator we have here 2001h2001 it's, this is the memory address this 20 i am showing you here 20 is the higher order memory address 01 is the lower order memory address this is the lsb this one is the msb this is the most significant bit therefore this 20 we have already shown here 20 will be carried out by the higher order address bus and a7 to a0 this will represent or this will carry the 0 1 value so during this first clock cycle here we'll having the 0 1 h this will be the data in this address data bus okay so we have to transfer it now as it is a memory write operation we have to see that which function the microprocessor is operating we are concerned with the memory address therefore the input output slash ember signal this is another signal sent by the microprocessor that it wants to access the memory unit therefore to access the memory unit we can see here this input output or memory bar signal this one is zero we can see so let me use another call this one signal is zero therefore this input output or memory bar signal for the memory write operation will be zero therefore we can write here so here we can see this is the low signal this is the active low signal and this signal will be low for full machine cycle this is the machine cycle that is the consisting of t1 t2 and t3 
this tree consists of the machine cycle okay so during this machine cycle this amber signal will be zero therefore it is a memory access now or it is the operation related to the memory access so in the first clock cycle or first t state that is the t1 we have performed the address transfer or we have find out the memory address and in this memory address we want to store the 20h data this data is the content of the accumulator as per this instruction accumulator is having some data and this accumulator data is 20h here so this is the data here this data we have to write into the memory okay that is the memory write operation therefore for the second and the third clock cycle this w r bar signal that represents the right operation this is the active low signal when the active low signal is low that will perform the specific operation related to that signal as it is a active low signal w r bar when the signal will go low this will be working as a data transfer or this will be working as the memory write operation okay therefore the write bar signal is zero when this signal is zero that data is loaded into this data bus so address data bus this is a multiplex address and data bus during the second and the third t step the early signal is low here we can see zero and zero value here therefore this address data multiplex bus will be transferring the data into the memory unit so what is the data here we have the 20h data so 20h this is the data here so this will be transferred into the memory unit and what about the memory bar signal this is another signal that will represent that this is the memory write operation when we have this signal high this is the disabling the memory write operation so when this mw bar signal will be low that is zero here here also zero in during this clock cycle so when these signals are low this will perform the memory write operation that is it will enable the memory unit or memory chip and the microprocessor will write the data into the memory unit now let us understand about the status signal so what about the status signal s1 and s0 so we have already seen in our table that s1 equal to 0 and s0 equal to 1 okay therefore these are the two complementary signals now therefore we can say like to be this s0 will be 1 and s1 will go low during the entire transmission therefore we can see here this s0 signal s0 signal is high during the entire period and s1 signal this is the s1 signal with the red color so this will be low for the entire operation to represent it is a memory write operation 0 and 1 okay s1 is 0 and s2 is equal to 1 here also we can write s1 equal to 0 comma s0 equal to 1 okay so in this way we can draw the timing diagram for the memory write operation so i have taken one example with that example i have explained how the memory write operation is performed so here we have to keep in mind that the wr bar signal goes low in the t2 period wr bar signal is this one so this will go low during the t2 period during this t2 period the address data bus is not disabled so here you have to keep in mind that we are directly transferring the data we are directly we are having a crossover here so we are not having any high impedance state or disabled state in the case of memory write operation but in the case of memory read operations we could see that there was a high impedance state okay so in the case of memory write operation there is no high impedance state or the address data bus is not disabled as it is done in the case of memory read or input output read operation okay but the data to be sent out to the memory is placed in the address data bus okay so as soon as the wr bar signal goes high during the t3 period during this period t3 period so the write operation will be terminated okay so wr bar signal here we are going during this t3 period is going high therefore the memory write operation is going to be terminated after that clock cycle so i have considered here one instruction there can be another instruction that is the store into the accumulator so here we can also write that sta store the content of the accumulator in the memory address suppose we have another instruction so another example i am writing here with sta 
comma two five zero zero eight. Okay, so what will be the function of this instruction? Store the content of the accumulator in this memory address. So whatever be the content of this accumulator register or accumulator, it will be stored into this memory address. Okay, this is the memory write operation. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, please put it in the comment section below. Also like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.